Hello everyone, so this is going to be a full in-depth walk around my 2002 Iveco Daily long wheelbase which I have converted into a camper. It's got a 2.8 litre turbo diesel um, I think the miles per gallon roughly at a guess I'd say it's about 25 which you know it's not great but you got to remember how big the thing is but yeah uh, I think length it's about it's just under 23 feet long just over seven meters so it's a big old girl where do we start well I suppose the first thing it's green and um, this paint was just hand rollered finishes acceptable fine for me 50 quid of paint you know can't really grumble at that I think it suits it a lot better though than white painted that green painted the top bit black and all the plastics are painted satin black as well and the wheel hubs so it just gives it a bit of a refresher I think it suits it a lot more with the look that I was going for now Okay, starting at the front. So down here, we have the two spotlights. They sort of have a low beam, they're good for in the fog and things like that. Um, obviously you've got the normal lights and then there's the mini dot lights on there and all the way along the roof. And then up on the roof is the big floodlight. It's a two part light, so the sides, the two sides here, fire out spots and then the middle section here is like a flood so it basically lights the whole world up pretty much when you put that on and um, when you combine that with the bottom ones it's basically like having a mobile sun uh, moving around to the side obviously the wheels are not standard they are Kumo Road Venture MT51s. They're about as big as you can get uh, on this van without it rubbing on the arches and things. But yeah, I mean, a bit unnecessary, but they look cool, don't they? And it does give it a bit more ground clearance because they are a few inches bigger than the normal ones, but you can see how close that is there. It, it does have enough clearance, it doesn't rub, but you won't want to go any bigger, that's for sure. On the windows, got the window wind deflectors here. They're bloody brilliant, only about 30 quid. Um, it just means like when it's raining and whatever, you can uh, have the window cracked a bit and not get a cab full of rain. All the doors have double security on them, so you've got the normal locks and then they all have these puck locks. So it's just extra security and they take a right mission to get up and they've got big bolts going all the way through and then there's another plate which I've put behind so you can't just pull it off you'd have to literally cut off the door out to get that up uh, side window that was just off eBay about 40 quid or something uh, just made it fit pretty much um, this window and the other window that's why the finish on them is a bit weird um, obviously it's limo tinted on the inside and then on the outside it is um, a layer of anti-smash film it was quite thick the film itself is about two mil thick so if you go at it with a hammer it's gonna do kind of like what a car windscreen does you know where it crumples but it, you can't smash through it sort of thing it's not just gonna explode like a normal so if you smash from the side of those it just pop wouldn't it like a normal car whereas this one you can't and it's also sealed all the way around on top of the film so that there's no way you, you just can't <laughs> it'd take a, a lot of effort to smash that or just get in through there um, it's about right about the same down here that is the uh, the fill point for the LPG bottle which is inside the garage and then that's just a vent which is at the very bottom of that LPG can uh, LPG cupboard so if if you get a gas leak it can just come out the side there 
I changed all the uh, changed all the marker lights as well for LED ones. They just look a bit better. Um, look at the top at the back here. Then We've got two more floodlights, just so that if you're working out here or getting stuff out in the dark, you can uh, light the whole thing up. That's one of the cameras there. That's the one that points straight down. So the view you get is something like that. And there's another camera directly underneath there. And that one basically acts like the rear view mirror. Um, again, another, another puck lock on there. So there's one on every door. And then you got the six little uh, marker lights as well, just because why not, pretty much. Now coming around to this side, that one there, with grass on it, is the vent for the battery cabinet. So just behind here, there's three batteries. Thought I'd better put a vent on there just in case, you know, in case one of them leaks or something, because they do leak. Is it hydrogen, I think? Um, or something like that, anyway. Better safe than sorry, isn't it? On the side here, this is the other window. Again, this is just a random window. Neither of the windows are made for this van. I just sort of made them fit. Uh, the reason this one's got all these bolts around the sides is because there's a frame that I put inside and bolted all the metal to it so that the metal stays solid. Because obviously this metal is quite flappy and it'd be easy to pop the window out. Um, so that just keeps it all rock solid around the sides and also the frame itself of the window is bolted to the chassis of the van or to the uh, uh, to the interior of the van so there's no way to get it off without smashing it basically because the problem with these windows it's like a H seal and this rubber just sits over the metal and if you really wanted to you could get a crowbar pop that and the whole window would come out but if you screw it to the metal then there's no way that can happen so this has obviously got the uh, anti-smash and the limo tint as well. Um, that's the door for the cassette toilet system. Uh, if you've been following along with my travel videos, you'd have seen me emptying that. But yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and then the other bolt for the puck lock here. Under this side, this is the tank for the shower fastened under there and then that's the release so you can empty it on the roof see at the front we've got the spotlight just after that is the solar panel which is a uh, 300 watt single panel um, and it's plenty for what I need just behind that is the TV aerial that little black thing sticking up and then on from that is the roof hatch and then the skylight just behind and that's pretty much it another modification added to the van uh, upgraded the rear suspension so normally this is a single leaf and now it's twin so I just thought beef up the back suspension a bit because obviously got all this extra weight in the back so and you can see like a lot of these vans when you see them on the road um, you always see the back of them is sagging down like this and obviously as you can see mine is uh, pretty much as high if not slightly higher than the front like that doesn't squash down at all and that's that's fully loaded that is probably not a million miles away from three and a half tons actually last time I weighed it it weren't far off so yeah it's worth doing that it's about two or three hundred quid or something um, but it's well worth doing when I bought the van when I drove it back I didn't realise, I drove it back down the motorway about 70 miles and one of the leaves was actually snapped like in the centre, it was split in half and only just hanging on so obviously I didn't want that to ever happen again so I got quite lucky there yeah, that's, that's a worthwhile upgrade doing the front is a leaf as well but it goes across I think you can change that, there is a way to adjust it if you do want a bit more ground clearance um, but I think mine's on the highest setting anyway so I didn't bother right we shall start the uh, interior with the cabin area so 
is a bit messy and a bit dirty because I am living in here at the moment. But uh, yeah, let's start with the seats. So obviously they're not standard Iveco seats. These are from a 2004 Honda Accord. Um, I just built brackets on the bottom so that they fit onto the Iveco seat bases because uh, obviously normally it has a bench seat here but I wanted access to the rear so that's why I went down this route and I wanted some comfy seats they are electric and heated although I didn't bother connecting the heater up because I couldn't be bothered basically um, but all the electric works so that's our deal gives you a little bit of luxury um, obviously it looks very different in here the dashboard is all wrapped in this vinyl um, just because I like black painted the doors and all of the headliner is uh, suede it's like a suede material um, the pillars the headliner and then the rear is the black carpet the same as the floor the whole floor is carpeted it's insulated underneath as well to cut out the road noise and stuff from because I think these tyres make a bit more noise than the normal ones uh, but other than that you got your normal glove box there and then I've just built a little tray that goes on the top of it that's fastened on just for extra storage if I need it uh, in the centre here we've got the centre tray um, just got a couple of cup holders which are full of crap at the minute and then a nice big storage area here for all the bits and this is sitting on top of a subwoofer underneath so it's perfect perfect little setup that is and then obviously when I'm going in the back I just step over it like it's a waste of space just having that open so I thought I might as well put something there um, what else not much really I put two extra speakers on either side up there couple of hooks on the back of the door for coats and stuff um, but yeah then you get to the, uh, the cabin area oh. and the dashboard is obviously different fire it up for you so so obviously let's start down here so this piece here would normally be here um, I wanted it, uh, like I wanted to put this stuff in, and I didn't like that. So the good thing about this van is everything's manual. All of this is cable driven, apart from that one. Um, that's just got a little wire going to it. But these are all cable, a bit like the gears on a push bike. So all I did is just undid it all, moved the cables around, and then put it there. So that gave me nice little space here for the entertainment system um, it's already had this so I thought I might as well use make use of it and that's all my music and stuff on there it's just a, it's a Kenwood DDX 4016 DAB if you're interested it does have DAB radio the uh, aerial is just up there in the window um, but yeah so that keeps me entertained while I'm driving and then this side here we've got an outdoor temperature gauge uh, these three switches here, you've got one that turns the cameras on and off because there's two cameras on this um, the middle one is the power for the sat nav it's just an option to be able to turn them off, normally I just leave all three on and then the top one just turns that off so that's what they do and these four here, these are all the lights um, so I'll show it. So you, you've got like your little lights here, and then the big light on the roof. These are uh, the rear lights for backing up. There's two spotlights on the back, and then these are the two spotlights that are down below here. They give you like a low angle beam if you need it. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. Obviously, they're all in the same place that they normally are. Um, but yeah, so then moving up, obviously we've got the sat-nav, which is just a Garmin Zumo. Uh, this is actually a motorbike sat-nav, but that means it came with this bracket here, which is, I think it's called a ram mount. Um, and 
I've just bolted that into the dashboard and then you have the ball mount here so I can just put it where I need it and then you can take it off and it comes with uh, it's all wired in so all I need to do when I get in the van is just chuck that on there like that and then that's ready to go then so this uh, this sat nav comes with all its lifetime updates of uh, European maps, so absolutely perfect. I just updated it before I left as well. And then next to that, you've got the the screen for the cameras. So this is on the low camera at the minute. This basically acts as my rear view mirror. Yeah, because obviously it's a big van and there's no way you can see only your mirrors, but they only take you so far. And this this one is directly behind. So if you look, I mean, I can see that van just out of that, but I can't see him at all out of that mirror. And then in there, it's clear as day. And if you press this button here, that'll switch to the second camera, which points directly down. So this part here is the foot plate at the back of the van. So if I need to, I can reverse within, you know, an inch of whatever's behind. Um, and it just makes, living with a van like this because it is a very big van like this is about as big as it gets before you need a different license uh, it just makes life a lot easier but yeah that's pretty much it the rest of the dash this is all just standard iveco obviously i've spray painted all of the uh, all the plastics that's all sprayed black um but yeah that's pretty much then Change the gear stick, put a new gator on it, nice leather one. Um, I didn't buy this, I just had this knocking around. The uh, the one that came with it was horrendous, so I thought I might as well stick that one on it. Um, and yeah, that's it really. And then, the, oh yeah, I've got the, uh, these are the sensors for the alarm, because there is an alarm system on this. When I need to use it, uh, I keep one fire extinguisher just down the back here just in case hopefully I never need it I've got one in the back as well so yeah pretty much covered for whatever happens I think that is it for the front oh yeah I put uh, I put red seat belts on it as well which you probably noticed <laughs> I don't know why it needed new seat belts so I just thought yeah, why not let's get some red ones don't want it all black in here do we have a little bit of color right let's take my shoes off and we'll go into the back so what we have here this this is uh, all built this isn't the standard bulkhead this is the walls you got the shower behind here and this door in the middle it is lockable um, so if I really want to lock the van down I can lock this door as well right, let's go through into the back open that like that and there we go little mat on the floor for when you come in there's the overall overall view for you so we've got bathroom here kitchen area here obviously the bed up there that leads through into the garage and then the seating area on that side there let's start so all the lighting in here is all these LED lights all the way through. Uh, under here as well, there's two there, two under that side there, and then on the bottom we've got the little floor lights just because they look cool basically. So yeah, concertina door, it just slides across like that. And then this is the bathroom. So you've got your shower tray at the bottom here. We've got a Thetford cassette toilet here. Yeah, it's a manual one because I didn't. I thought with the electric one, it's just more to go wrong, isn't it? So, we've got a little cabinet there. Uh, nothing special, just yeah. Obviously, you've got the shower curtain here. So when you're having a shower, that just you took that all the way around. That's just on a uh, bit of plumbing pipe. That I made to fit so and then the shower itself is here it's just a basic shower there's no hot and cold it's just cold um, and then a little switch at the back here you just pop that on you have shower. 
So that's that. And that just feeds a pipe from behind there all the way down the back of this wall, around the back of the sofa, and into that compartment there is the shower tank. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Little bog roll holder hanging off the bottom of there. <laughs> it's basic, but at the end of the day, like you've got a toilet and a shower in your car. I mean, you know, <laughs> not many people can say that, can they? Right, moving on. So that's the back of the sliding door there. Uh, you just got the one opening window at the top here, a little sliding one. And then the blind is just a house blind, which I've built a, a frame around so it can't flap around everywhere and screwed the bottom one in. Um, so now you can just use it like this and it stays in place. Because the last thing I wanted was that bouncing around everywhere while I'm driving. Um, there's more the security on here. So you've got this latch here, which when this door opens, it sort of goes out like this. So this one just stops it from being able to go out at the top. At the bottom, we've got a dead bolt. That's going straight into the uh, bodywork down there. And then obviously the normal locks and the the puck lock on the outside. Um, yeah, the floor, the floor is just laminate flooring. Uh, it's quite thick stuff, about 10 mil, um, and it, it steps up a little bit. That's just the design of the van, so I had to put a little step in here. It's only about an inch, but you got to do what you got to do, haven't you? Bin there, a bit more storage. Um, right, kitchen. So, we've got the knife right there, that's uh, bolted into the countertop, so that's not going anywhere. Um, Ooh, bye bye then. The, uh, the countertop itself is acrylic, so it's a layer of uh, particle board underneath with uh, 3mm, I think it's 3mm or 5mm acrylic over the top. Um, it just gives it a much like a nice finish. Looks really clean. Um, oh, that's the that's the uh, my doorstop. So I was trying to work out for ages how I was going to do it, trying different doorstops. It didn't work. So in the end, I just drilled an hole in the floor. Get that little peg there, and then if you're on the slant, that holds the door shut. Oh, door open. Sorry. So yeah, there you go. Sometimes the simplest solutions. Are the ones. Uh, two burner hob, got your big and your small. Um, yes, yeah, nothing really amazing about that other than it is an LPG one because I'm running LPG in here for the gas uh, so that I can fill it up at petrol stations and stuff. Uh, a little hook there for my kettle. Another little storage thing there. The splashback is also the same acrylic as this but a different colour. A little bit of storage over this side here, and then the sink area, the chopping board, which I've put little feet on the bottom like that, so that when I'm driving around, it can't slide off. And you just got your normal sink here, and this is a switched tap, so it's always on. And you just that came out a bit fast, didn't it? And that's it. You just do the tap, and there you go. Right. Uh, above the above the uh, kitchen, you got these storage cupboards. They're just on gas struts so that they hold up and you don't need to mess around. Yeah, I didn't finish the insides of them because I just couldn't be bothered. To be honest, you don't see it, so they just got these little latches. They look quite smart. You can see my uh, epic cutting skills. That's because I just did it freehand with a jigsaw. That was not smart. So don't do that. They work fine though, so that's why they've not been changed. And looking at the bottom, uh, we've just got a little towel holder there. That's just nothing special. And we've got the cutout on this side here, which is where I keep like, my bird. I've got another big pan at the end there. This side here, this is just 
This is literally a chest of drawers that I bought and built the kitchen around them. Um, and I thought that was the best way to do it so that everything works as it should, you know, because I'm not the best at this kind of thing. I thought, do it this way, and then, you know, everything's going to open, it's all going to be fine. All I did, obviously I painted it, stained these, and then these little latches here, they're just little pieces of metal with a screw in the middle, and when I drive, you just... Uh, pop them like that and then nothing can open and then when I stop you just flick them over easy as that really I mean you can over complicate all of this kind of stuff but I just like to keep it simple this side here has got this door and this is where my water tanks are it's a bit of a mess in here but. so here this one here is the fresh water tank it's a really simple setup. So you just got um, a little pump that sits in the tank there. Uh, it's just one of these little, I think it's Whale, the brand. Just a little 12 volt pump. And then that just connects to this pipe which goes straight up to the tap. And that's it. Simple as that. And then for the waste, get the torch out and do this properly, shall we? So that waste goes across into the grey tank, which is that one there. There's a million and one ways that you can do this. A lot of people just have the grey tank like in here and then you take it out and go and dump it down a drain or whatever. But I didn't want to have to keep taking it out every time. I wanted to be able to dump it from the van. So I've just got the PVC pipe here coming out of the bottom of the tank. And then that there is just a ball valve. Um, with the other side of the pipe just going straight out the bottom of the van so then when I want to dump it I just pop that up tank empties, close it, job done then isn't it? You don't even need to get out and that's pretty much it uh, the wires are a bit messy but it works so that's where I keep all my uh, cleaning stuff another, another tank of water in there I just have, I have this tank here which is 25 litres. I have four of these, that's another 20 litres. So, for one man, 45 litres of water. That's not even drinking water, that's just washing up water and whatever. Um, that's plenty. So, that is that. Got a little poof here. <laughs> just uh, options, isn't it, when you're sitting and stuff. So, moving on to this side, that is literally just. A house sofa. I uh, just got one that was the right length for what I wanted and the right depth. That's the hardest bit is getting the depth. Normally sofas are about a metre or so and they come to like here. So I was getting a narrow enough one to fit because they used to be here, there used to be seat there, seat there, table in the middle. But it just wasn't it wasn't nice to sit in to be honest. So went for the sofa instead. And then down the side of the sofa here let me open all this for you so you can see. Underneath this panel here, just lift up the side, put that out of the way. This one is the shower tank. Like I said earlier, that pipe just goes all the way to the bathroom. And then down under here, that is one of the uh, Chinese diesel heaters, which I did an unboxing and stuff a little bit ago in the channel. Um, if you want to have a look at that. but. That works, an absolute treat now, although it was an utter ball ache to start with because parts were broken and then it was leaking and all sorts, so yeah, I would, after using it, I would recommend it, I used it this morning, um, but bear in mind it is going to be a headache, you know, there's, unless you get lucky, uh, and then the outlet for that just comes out here, has like a 360 swiveling thing so I can point it wherever I want. Yeah that's that. And then this wall here, um, oh yeah I just have the uh, the kettle plug for the laptop charger that comes through from in the garage so it's a bit easier. Uh, start at the top, that's the controller for the solar panels which as you can see isn't doing very well right now because I'm in a forest. 
uh, but that that works brilliantly. Photonic Universe, um, they've been faultless the whole time I've had them. It's the batteries that let me down. Uh, that's because I was cheap and bought crap ones. That's just a uh, carbon monoxide alarm. Um, just everyone should have one of them in the van. Full stop. I've got a little mount here for one of my guitars, just so that can't go anywhere, and it's got a home. That is the controller for the heater. Uh, it also comes with a remote control, which is hanging up there. But I do go over that in my video. Um, so I'm not going to go into that now. Um, right, so yeah, we've got here, we've just got uh, a basic car stereo, um, and that goes into this speaker. And the other speaker's just up there, just so that I've got some music in here really. Um, that's quite a recent addition actually, because I did a trip in the van before, I didn't have music in here and yeah, it wasn't very good. That little switch there, I've also gone over that on the channel before but I'll tell you again. So all that is is just some little lights that I put in. Just up here, look. It's just so that at night, you know, you don't have to have all these big spotlights on. You just have that, and it's just a nice little ambient light then. And the other thing in this area, up here, is the uh, power outlet, which is controlled by this switch here. And it's just a basic extension one. You've got your USBs and, yeah, speaks for itself really. It's just handy. To have it here next to the seating area so if I need to charge my phone or camera batteries whatever because I bought um, USB adapters for all my camera stuff so I can just charge it off that I don't need to use the inverter um, yeah a couple of little badges there from a few of the places I've been <laughs> and then above the seating area here is more storage so this is just these are just uh, corrugated PVC panels just cut holes in them so that can slide open like that keep all my camera stuff in that one so it's nice and easily accessible and then same size again on this side I just got the camera back there so it's just all tech in there basically but yeah that works that works lovely that does it's it's quite deep as well, so there's plenty of storage in there, and it's all braced off the ceiling, so you can put quite a bit of weight in that um, clock. So, and then that's the other window, that's just one big window that you see from the outside, but in the middle here, that's one of the braces for the wall of the van. I know some people do cut them out, but I just thought, yeah, it's hidden behind there, you see, the actual brace itself. I just thought better to leave it in, you know, better safe than sorry, isn't it? Yeah. And then just above that is the blind, that's just a house blind. Um, and then I've just screwed the side in here, cut the cord down to length, and then just bring it down at night. There's a little bit of Velcro on the bottom there that you just stick onto there. So then uh, it puts it right up against the wall then. So no light can get out, and people can't see that you're in there. I mean, the windows are limo tinted anyway, but you might as well leave that shut now, actually. But yeah, that just gives it that extra thing. And also, obviously during the day, if it's roasting and the sun's coming in, the back of this is white. That was a must, because then it sort of reflects the heat out. And I tell you what, for how thin this is, it don't half do a good job, like you can sit here, the other day it was 30 degrees, the sun was beating onto this side of the van, and I was just sat here fine. Um, so yeah, if you're going to put these blinds on, make sure you get white or whatever, however you want to do it. Some people put the reflective material on them and all sorts, but I just went that way because it was easier. So moving on now to the bed area, uh, I chose to go with a high bed. So that I can have plenty of garage space underneath and then you don't have junk all knocking around in the van. Um, it starts, we've got a little 12 volt TV there that's on a swiveling mount. So I can 
ever want to sit down here on the uh, sofa and watch it I can or if I want to sit in bed it, you know it works either way just above that that is a smoke alarm but the caps off it because I'm constantly turning it on and off with cooking because it just goes straight off um, but always every night I'll put it in um, and if I'm leaving the van or whatever I'll do it um, yeah, the bed is a, it's a foam mattress, like a proper mattress, not just a bodged one, but the shape of it, it is double, but I just had to cut this corner off to uh, fit my layout, but perfectly fine. I mean, it's fine for two people, for one person there's bloody loads of space, so directly above that is my roof hatch. Um, that opens all the way out and you can get out onto the roof if you want to and that, I built that myself, that's just uh, a plywood Frankenstein thing, it's all sealed, it works fine and then it just has a lock on there, it's just like a shed door lock you just flip that over and then put the carabiner in there and then there's no way you can open it then just a little stand to hold it up uh, there is lighting up here, this switch here that turns on the LEDs around the bed and obviously you can have them whatever colour you fancy um, and then that one there that switches on the fan in that vent there's a, there's a, a PC fan in there which I put in um, and that just gets a bit of airflow going let's, uh, let's go up and have a look turn that switch on and that turns on this fan here. I know it's it's not perfect, really. I should have maybe four slightly smaller fans, but it does the job. It does actually work. And this is just a uh, is it Fiamma? I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it. It's about forty quid. It's just a basic one. Um, but yeah, it does the job just fine. Well, I didn't again. Except them ones are made out of hardboard. Yeah, just close the loads of storage in here. Just all closed. And that's just a little foam mount. Um, and I've got a uh, an aux lead here that runs down to the stereo there. So if I want to just be in bed and have the music on, I don't have to get up. <laughs> and then you just got two more massive storage areas here, which I barely even use. I just use this one as a bedside table, basically. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Headboard as well, I'll put a headboard in. Just so it's a bit nicer. And it's then it's all sealed off to the doors. But yeah, there's uh, people always say that it looks really cramped and stuff up here. But like, if I go at the side here, I mean, I'm a big guy. Like I'm six foot. And you can see my feet aren't off the end of the bed. There's plenty of space up here. You know, it's what it is, isn't it? Like, it's a van. What, what do you want? <laughs> I'd sooner have a bit less space up here than have all that garage space than have the bed down low and then have no storage. That don't make any sense to me. So I went for this option. Alright, moving down now. So you've got access to the garage from inside the van as well. And the lights on so you can see what's going on. Uh, on the side here, this is the uh, the gas locker. It's all, all sealed, um, it's just as good as I could do basically. And then you just got a little hatch here, which has got a seal around it, just so that I can turn the bottle on and off when I need to, not when I'm driving and stuff. Um, on this side here, that's where I keep my table. Uh, oh yeah, I better show you that, not I? Pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't really use it to be honest, so I don't really need it. Just got this fold out of the gear. It looks rubbish, but that's just held on with a leggy band like that. I'll show you how it goes. You just pop that leg up, and then there's this two things here two holes in the table, and they just clip into that. And then the leg sits like that, and I've just got a little lock that goes into the leg to stop it being able to uh, go that way. For some reason, though, my table's turned into a banana. I think it's probably the heat. 
don't know, you, can, you can't tell on this lens, but it has curved like that. This, uh, you know, not the end of the world, but if I need a table, then I still have the option for a table. So, right. And it, it, you know, it does get in the way a bit, but if you're using it for the purpose, like occasionally I'll put my laptop on there, normally I just have it on my lap, but yeah, if I want to be on it for a while, I can have it on that, and then that's it. Well, you never know, maybe one day I'll have guests in here for dinner. <laughs> uh, behind the table, that's where the, that's the fuel tank for the heater, and then underneath you've got the pump and the filter there and everything, and the uh, electric fly swap, <laughs> just because. Alright, so moving into the garage, uh, just got a little bit of storage up there for some shoes and whatever. Um, spare tyres ratcheted to the wall there, that's just a normal tyre. I didn't have, not got a spare, one of the big ones, because I mean they're £100 each, so I don't want uh, one of them wasting. And then I've just got the bike strapped to the wall, and then just the other guitar there as well. On the roof we've just got these LED uh, strips, um, that one there's broke, but they they came with the van, they were already in the back so I don't know where you get them from but I imagine you can get them on eBay. Let's come, so on this side, this is like the storage wall, um, got all my water storage down there, spare coolant, spare food in there, that's all spare cans and stuff. Um, that's the the drawer rack there, so I've got like a first aid drawer, uh, tools in the top, and then just other bits and bobs. That's the I've got the drone there, and then just more storage down there. That's what mostly toilet stuff and some more water, and then yeah, other bits and bobs. Doors. I've got another deadbolt on this door here. So this one obviously deadbolts itself, top and bottom. But this one you could open it if you really wanted to, but with that on there there's literally no way unless you uh, go at it with an angle grinder. So just on the back of this wall then, this is the uh, brains of the operation. You've got the solar charge controller there, the panels come down from the roof, go into that and then that goes into the battery. To way down the back is the inverter. I think it's just it's just a cheap one. I think that is, um, but it works. It's you know it's not amazing. It's about, what is it? Two thousand watt apparently. I don't know how true that is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's just the back of the stereo, the back of that other speaker there. Um, I used to have all my things charging in there, but then I moved the uh, charging station to the inside of the van. I want to put the sofa in. Um, Obviously that's the other fire extinguisher, nice and accessible from there if I need it, or likewise if I'm in the back. Um, this is the main 12 volt rail, so these cables here, these two, they come out of the batteries. And then everything's fused, I know it's not the best setup in the world, but it still is organised, like everything's got its own fuse. Um, you just got a switch for the lights there, and then that one is the 12 volt switch for the fridge. This fridge is a bit uh, power hungry to be honest. I think I might need a different one. Or, well I'll see how it is once I do get new batteries but yeah, that's, uh, that's in there like that. Just does the job, you know. A little power strip there from the inverter. And then I've got safety cutouts on either side if I need to. One of them just kills everything that's 12 volt and one of them kills the solar panels. Um, just as like an emergency kind of thing. The batteries are in here underneath all that so I'm not going to get it out but it's three 110 amp hour car batteries uh, wired, uh, I can't remember what it's called but it's, it's done properly, I found on the internet how to do it, how you meant to connect them so that they work as a, a one single 12 volt battery. Um, but they're, they're shit anyway to be honest, I need to, uh, I need to upgrade them. What else we got? 
got a washing line <laughs> just in case I mean if I've only got a few bits like I had my towel on there the other day um, yeah that's about it a little bit of storage down the side there I keep my fishing rods and stuff and that's pretty much everything to be honest oh, and then you just got that mirror as well on the back of the door that's just a normal mirror clipped on there so a bit more storage underneath the, uh, the sofa as well um, but yeah so there you go hopefully uh, if you're out building your first fan or you want some inspiration for your second hopefully this video is useful for you um, the, uh, the video is a little bit rushed but that's just because I don't want it to be like three hours long because obviously I am on a trip at the moment and I've got to upload it from my phone so give you one last little look around everything and yeah so thanks for watching hopefully it's useful for you and I shall see you in the next episode of the trip.